Guys, welcome back to the channel. Sitting here with Corey Miller. Corey works for Black Eagle, as well as Darton Conquest Stabilizers. Corey was kind enough to drive all the way over from Montana today to help me with an aero build. I am thinking about running X Impacts for 2022. Now, I did shoot a bear with an X Impact this spring. I saw that. Enjoyed thing. it. It was, I had a great experience with it. So come along. We're going to do an aero build and we're going to dive deep on Black Eagle. Now, I'm a tinkerer, so okay. I can't just say I'm going to run this or that. I'm very non-committal. I like to mess with stuff for the YouTubes. This is what I built. This is what I shot that bear with, the X Impact. Tell me a little bit more about this arrow. Give me all the highlights of why this four millimeter stands alone as one of the best options in that category. It's a lightweight 166 four millimeter. I call them the 166. Pluses with the lightweight, we can start getting FOC to gain to a weight that we want, an overall weight. I like to shoot a certain weight, and when I build an arrow, I want to I want to build to a certain weight, but then I want as much weight in the nose of that arrow as I can possibly get to get me to the overall weight. We get that with a with an X impact. The other really nice thing with this arrow is the spine consistency. If you were to put one of these on a spine checker and actually put it under the weight load and roll this arrow, you're gonna see that needle hardly ever move. For you, it's not a big deal because pretty much crossbow bolts. Um, <laughs> what he's saying is I'm short yeah. and I have short arrows. Pretty much all companies measure their straightness 28 inches into a shaft. Black Eagle measures the entire shaft. So when we say this is an 01, the entire length of this arrow is an 01. So you're not having to trim two inches off the back and another inch and a half off the front or vice versa, depending on where that runoff is in. Like I say, for you, it's not a, not a huge deal. Where that really comes important is, is someone with a really long draw shooting a 30 inch arrow. He doesn't have a lot to trim off of, or if you're buying pre-fletched like arrows. Like Phelps, who doesn't even cut yeah. his arrows. And, or if you're buying a pre-fletched arrow. Right. So if this was- Wait, people still do that? Yep. Okay. Yeah, you know, there's nothing wrong with it, no. you know? No. Um, but yeah, so That's if, if, <laughs> if this was an average arrow with a pre-fletched arrow, vein on this, we don't know if the runoff is all off this back end and the straight end was up here where we're cutting it off. Yep. And so now you're kind of left at the mercy of buying what you get. So with ours, that entire shaft, so it doesn't matter. You can cut it all off the front and you're gonna have an 01 straight shaft. What kind of tolerances do you guys offer in this arrow? 0.001, that's it. No other nope. mismatch, nothing. Nope. Wow. So you we do, yeah, so we do a, a deep impact, which we'll do that in an 03 and an 01. It's a heavier grains an inch. It's a lot heavier of an arrow. So there again, going back to what am I trying to, to accomplish arrow weight wise, FOC wise, diameter wise, we've got an arrow that's gonna fit that kind of, kind of category. So. All right, so one question about four millimeters. For me, am I gonna notice more of a difference in my group size when I shoot in windy conditions, which I do generally yep. quite a bit in practice. And it seems like a lot in hunting season, like it's kind of unavoidable, like wind is a thing. It wind, wind is an issue and then penetration. Those are the two things that you're gonna gain by going to a 166. Disadvantage to a 166, if you wanna shoot a light and knock, that's kind of where, I just don't think that there's personally a, a really good solid lighted knock out there yet for a 166. Fair enough. You know, honestly, so, I didn't even run a lighted knock at all this last season at all. Yeah. And I, and I kind of wanted to, like when I was in Arizona, it would have made for a better footage. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to run lighted knocks again. And, and I love lighted knocks. I'm just not going to run them. So that's not going to be a huge. So again, penetration, tighter groups in the wind, really good tolerance. And then the GPI, we're going to drop in the chart below here. You got your, what, 250 spines, your 300s, 350s? 350s. What are these? Uh, 400s. You're shooting a 300. Shooting a 300. So what's my GPI? One. Eight one. We eight also one do one. it in a 200. Yeah. So You do for Josh Jones, who's yeah. got a monkey yeah. arm draw lane. Yep. GPI on that 200. Gordon. 11. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, it's so heavy for a 200. <laughs> That's really do you, do you really need a two or can no, you get I'm by with a 250? 250, 250 gets you down 9.5. Yeah. Some of so. my use a 300. It depends on how much weight I'm putting in the yeah. front how light the overall shaft Yep. Is. Okay, so lastly, we got guys we brought. I got bare shafts. I just like saying that. Yeah. And uh, we are gonna build these arrows for you right now. Corey's gonna show us the difference between two different outsert options. Yeah. And I'm a little bit excited about this one that I don't have 
because there's some things you can do for broadhead alignment and all that kind of fancy stuff that some of you really want to get into. And weights, because we do it in a couple different options. And you can still actually add brass to this. If you are wanting to build a super heavy arrow or super front of center, we can even add more weight to it if, if that's what you're wanting to do. So I guess we should start with my end goal for these arrows, and then we can kind of work our way backwards. I don't even remember what th what this was total weight was that I shot the bear with, but it was like, I'm mm -hmm. guessing 415, 420 ish. Um, uh, you're running just the standard. And I, my sweet spot for me has been historically 450 ish. Uh, everything I killed this year is with a 448 minus this. This was the lightest uh, I've ever shot a bear with, and it was I think about 420. Yeah. I want to guess. So I generally like to be around 450. My archery coach MFJJ wants me to be like at 399. <laughs> And uh, so we argue about that on camera, but then my friend Ranch Ferry wants me to be at like 550 to 615. Everybody's got an opinion. I'm just gonna tell you what I want. I want middle of the road that I can use the same arrow regardless of the species all out west. Is that something that we could do? Let's do it. I, I'm a little bit more on Josh's, your draw length. Yeah! Uh, uh, the speed loss and, and knowing what you hunt. Yep. You're on the ground, you're run and gun, your distances are all over the board. If you were a whitetail tree stand guy only or ground blind guy, yeah, you know, maybe go a little bit heavier on that, that arrow, especially from shooting above, you're trying to get an exit hole out the bottom. Yeah. So having that heavy arrow is probably really important. I shot a 442 grain arrow this year. Okay. And I shot a full size, the 244 arrow, didn't slow down. My, my sweet spot for me is trajectory. I know guys freak out when I say that, but for me, elk hunting, I don't always have the exact range. Could be, yep. I, I ranged this tree at 42. He's like three yards ish in front of it, but then he took a step. I need forgiveness. I need the flattest shooting I can because a lot of times you, you end up getting a shot where the, the exact yardage is unknown. You kind of know an ish and an ish can cost me a lot if my arrow does a lot of crazy trajectory. So I don't mind going, whatever it ends up being is great as long as it's hard hitting we can get so two what holes. What kind of speed are you looking for? I'm going to be around 280 Katie, okay. ideally. But Josh had my V3X29 clocked at 294 with my RIP TKOs. Okay. That's kind of where, because you mainly shoot fixed heads also. Yep. So that fixed head, that magic area that we all talk about, seems like that 280, 290, yep. 275 to 285, somewhere in that yep. neck of the woods is the sweet spot. And there's a couple things about that tuning wise. Pin gap doesn't change a whole lot once you get above that speed. The arrow becomes a little more finicky. So the, re the reward of barely changing your pin gap from say 20 to 60 is so minute versus the arrow being finicky on form. I want as much energy transferred to this arrow. I want a perfect flying arrow with a fixed broadhead. So whatever that ends up being. Um, obviously I got Josh in my corner to help me tune, but at the end of the day, I've never been caught up on speed. I, how I would start to build an arrow for you, knowing where we want to be for speed, I'll plug in what bow you're going to shoot, what poundage you plan on shooting, figure out what that's going to come out to overall weight to get to that speed. And then actually we can go through the catalog and look through what insert, what arrow shaft, what spine, where yep. we're going to be, what broadhead do you plan on shooting? Are you shooting a 100 or 125? Yep. Or are you going to go 200 type of green broadhead? Okay. Um, which those are cool, but that's what's nice about this, that we can shoot kind of a, a broadhead that's readily available everywhere and still get a lot of FOC. Well, fortunately, we know that information. We know what bow I'm shooting. We're going to work on this arrow. We kind of know what broadhead I'm probably going to use. We definitely know what species I'm going to hunt. So let's go ahead and build some arrows right now. So what we're going to do, the IBO speed of your bow? Two nine, we said what, 294? No, no, the IBO speed, oh, the, the rating IBO that they, they give you. Uh, it's 340. No, it's like 342. 342. 342. Our draw length is? 27. Are you sure? Yep. Okay. Draw weight? 75. Ooh, strong boy. If we look at a 450 grain arrow, and we're going to plug in 20 grains for our D loop and our peep sight. Okay, fair enough. It's going to say you are going to, should be shooting right around 282. Give or take, depending on the company, on, on where that IBO rating is truly at. Yep. Let's just say five. Typically, it's going to be on the slow side. Usually, they're not going to be faster than what they say. No doubt, no doubt. So, that would put us 278. So, really, if we can come in around 440, 
gives us 285. So that's a good weight. Yeah. You're going to put you probably at 280. Like Josh was saying, if we yeah. if we could get a 400 grain arrow. It'll be close. It'll be 298. It, right? That's a little bit too fast Ooh, for me, that's, personally. Same here. Um, so I'm getting nervous about tuning a broadhead yeah. fixed. How about 420? 420. Man, get you around around 292. I probably anywhere from 430 to 445 is going to be our sweet spot. Let's do it. Let's try to get okay. there. Once we know that's the overall weight that we're shoot, shooting for, we'll figure out what length of arrow shaft wise, what broadhead we're going to go, and we can start building off of that. All right, let's do it. To try and find out, I know that your overall length of your arrow was 26 from where we're gonna put our broadhead to the end of the shaft here. It's 26 and three quarters. Well, with the, this outsert system, we're actually gonna cut the arrow an inch shorter than that. So we're gonna work so. off of 25 and three quarters to get how much our shaft weighs. We do that, that comes in at 208 grains. 8.1 times 25.75. The knock is uh, nine grains on the knock, or I'm sorry, seven grains. Seven grains on the knock, veins that you're gonna run, 27 grains. Broadhead, are we shooting 100 or 125? 125. So then we got a 125 known. That gives us 367 grains without our insert. Because we do a couple different options on this, you have an, an outsert here that weighs 40 to 44. So let's just call that 42 grains. Or we can run what I recommend, which is our focus system. We do two versions of this. We do a 80 grain and we do a 100 grain. So we call one's aluminum, one's a stainless steel. 367 plus 80 puts us at 447. 430 to 45. 450 yeah, is what I would probably build so off of. The 80, 80 grain aluminum the aluminum version my my thought process on this is stainless a lot of people think oh it's stainless steel so it's better it's stronger there's two things on that stainless becomes stronger but doesn't have as much bend so it's a little bit more brittle i shot both heads into concrete the stainless still buckled when i when i just flexed it it, it broke it still stayed intact but it didn't take much to I'll make it fall what, off. Let's try the aluminum. So on the and aluminum, it buckled. I'll let you, I'll let it, everyone know. it buckled, but it didn't break. Okay. I mean, it, it it absorbed all that energy and buckled like a front end of a car did. I feel like it can be somewhat stronger because it absorbs that energy to not make it Does snap the stainless off. make it 467 then? Yeah. So the aluminum, yeah, the aluminum makes it 447. And this is You'd be at 467. Two, so on this system that we run, when this is aluminum, this is stainless so the post is stainless inside which gives you very good durability on the shaft and then the outsert part that locks together is aluminum vice versa when we go stainless this becomes aluminum inside and stainless on the outside aluminum outside it's going to get us right where you probably want to be for speed wise penetration yeah. Kind of yeah. oh yeah hand. perfect let's build off of that <laughs> all right Corey, you got to build these arrows can you build fast Sure. Let's go. Talk to us, Juice. Just putting some goods on here, man. So just try to dab a little on there, and then I'll use the tip to spread it. The old tip to spread it. Tip right. to spread. Just make sure you get a little on everything. Don't need a ton. The more you put on there, the more excess you're going to have, and the more you got to clean off. Too much lube, and you're going to do big problems. And that comes with experience, right? Well, wouldn't like to think. <laughs> Probably. This is a three-part system. So we're gonna have our inside post on Dan's build. This is gonna be a stainless steel post, and we're gonna have an aluminum outsert. And then what locks it all together is our set screw here. There's a couple things that I really like about this system. One, when we put this post in there, it really gives a lot of strength to the tip of that shaft. When we put that outsert on, 
it's all going to get locked together with with our set screw here. But the, the neat thing that I like is if you are shooting a two blade, which I think it's very important to index your two blade to make them all the same. Now, whether or not that's straight up and down or left and right, kind of up to you and kind of up to what your bow is doing. But I believe making those all the same is very important. The cock vein here, and I want to make all these horizontal. So now I've got my broad edge screwed to my outsert and I'm going to line it up to how I want it. And I hang on to that, unscrew my broad head. Don't cut your fingers off. <laughs> and I'm going to drop my set screw down. Lock that together. So now it's all together. And now when I screw my broad head on, that's indexed. Pretty sweet. See what index means real quick? Setting your, your broad head to yeah. the exact same. It's the alignment of your broad head to the orientation of your fletching. Or well, yeah, a lot of blade times indexing. Guys will try and run their three blade broad head to line up with their fletch. Mm -hmm. I don't think it really matters as much on a three and a four blade as much as it does on a two. Two blades really important. It, two blade, it's a planing surface. Yes, it's really going to start to steer a little bit quicker yep. than more of a ball of of, vein, of uh, blades. Yep. Now the other neat thing on this is if Dan, which you probably will, he'll shoot some rocks. He'll dick one up. Yeah. If he bends one of these, now we can undo that set screw, pull this off, and we sell replacement ones, and then he can just slide a new one on there and tighten it back on. And so removal good. is basically way easier. Way easier than what oh, yeah. he was running last time, like that. because last time he glued it on there. Once you glue those on there and you bend one, you hit something hard enough. You're screwed. You're, yeah. And it, to take heat to it, to try to melt that glue, you're probably gonna screw up the carbon. So heat's not good with carbon. Just like that, it's installed. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. it. You, it's you all together. Glue, the only thing glues in is the internal That's piece. pretty fast. So I mean, now, Speed, like yeah. That. yeah, that's quick. And yeah. so he's running a 125 with an 80 grain outsert. So he's got 205 grains in the front of that arrow now. So that's a lot of weight in, in the a lot of fuck. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did we calculate like a lot of fuck? <laughs> it's a lot. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're using a 125 with 80 on that? It's 17 percent. Yeah, I bet you it's 17, 18 percent. Mm -hmm. Well, like like I say, I don't like really that. care about the magic number because I don't think there is. I just want to load as much weight as I can to get to that overall weight. Yeah, we could go to stainless, but then it's going to put us too high, heavy. Then it's going to be too slow. So we wanted to kind of keep into that 280 mark. That gives us 205 in the front instead of 220 in the front. Yeah, so you can get these from Josh at uh, PodiumArchery.com. And if he doesn't have them... The only reason I won't have them is if you well, want to ship them, buddy. Well, but we make umpteen different arrows. <laughs> so that's the thing is, is right now we're going to do our number one sellers, which is our 204 and our 166, Correct. our X Impact and our Rampage. Uh, and both the Rampage, that's another neat thing. The Rampage is a 204 that also we do the outsert focus system for that. Guys, I hope you learned something on this video. We're tinkering. Always be tinkering, messing with some Black Eagles, dropping down to four millimeter, running a cool outsert system that's gonna allow me to run your standard 204 type broadheads, like the Grim, Grim Reaper Micro Hades three blade, maybe an iron wheel, maybe something else, but we're tinkering. We're gonna see if this works. We're gonna post our total weights on the next episode. You'll be able to see how these things fly. You can watch me fletch the rest, build the rest. Subscribe to the channel if you're into tinkering. Thank you to Corey Miller and Josh Jones for allowing us to invade their space, tap into their wisdom, and get better at our tree. We'll catch you on the next one. I guess Dan the fitness man has already beat me here, and he took my parking spot. Don't appreciate that, Dan. Don't appreciate that.